Welcome to today's lesson on communicable and non-communicable diseases. In this lesson, we'll explore the distinct characteristics that separate these two types of diseases. In our lesson today, we will start by defining what communicable and non-communicable diseases are. We will then highlight the key differences between them, including their causes, how they spread, and the impact they have on individuals and populations. We will also highlight some examples of communicable and non-communicable diseases. The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. From this definition, we understand that health is not just about not being sick. It encompasses a state of overall well-being, both mentally and physically. Diseases can significantly impact an individual's health, and they can be classified into two main categories, communicable and non-communicable diseases. Let's break down the differences between these two types. Communicable diseases are illnesses that can be spread from person to person, or between people and animals. These diseases are caused by microorganisms known as pathogens, which include bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. Here are some key points to understand about communicable diseases. Pathogens are harmful microorganisms that invade the host's body and cause disease. Here are some examples of pathogens. Bacteria are single-celled organisms, for example, tuberculosis. Viruses require a host cell to reproduce. Measles is a virus. Parasites live on or in a host organism, for example, malaria. Fungi can infect various parts of the body, for example, athlete's foot. Communicable diseases can spread in various ways, including direct contact with an infected person, for example, handshaking. They can also spread through indirect contact, for example, touching a door handle that an infected person has touched. Diseases can also spread through bites from infected animals or insects, known as vectors. Here are some examples of communicable diseases. Chickenpox, caused by the varicella zoster virus, spreads through respiratory droplets or direct contact with the rash. Measles is a highly contagious viral disease spread through respiratory droplets. Malaria is a parasitic disease transmitted by the bite of an infected Anopheles mosquito. Non-communicable diseases cannot be spread from person to person or between animals and people. These diseases are not caused by pathogens, but can result from lifestyle factors, genetic predisposition, or environmental factors. Here are some important aspects to know about non-communicable diseases. Non-communicable diseases are often long-lasting and may progressively worsen over time. They are known as chronic diseases. Common risk factors for non-communicable diseases include unhealthy diets, lack of physical activity, tobacco use, and excessive alcohol consumption. Some non-communicable diseases can be inherited or developed due to genetic mutations. People can have a genetic predisposition towards certain non-communicable diseases. Let's look at some examples of non-communicable diseases. Asthma is a chronic respiratory condition, characterized by airway inflammation and constriction, leading to breathing difficulties. Coronary heart disease occurs when the blood supply to the heart is blocked or interrupted by a buildup of fatty substances. Cancers are the uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells in the body. They can affect various organs and tissues and may result from a complex interaction of genetic and environmental factors. Both communicable and non-communicable diseases significantly impact individual and public health. While communicable diseases can lead to outbreaks and epidemics, non-communicable diseases contribute to long-term health issues and can place a significant burden on healthcare systems. Different methods are used to prevent people from being affected by communicable and non-communicable diseases. For communicable diseases, Vaccination helps prevent many viral and bacterial infections. Furthermore, hygiene practices such as regular hand washing, safe food handling, and disinfecting surfaces can help prevent the spread of microorganisms. Quarantine and isolation helps to contain the spread of infectious diseases during outbreaks or epidemics. For non-communicable diseases, lifestyle modifications like eating a balanced diet, exercising regularly, Avoiding tobacco and limiting alcohol intake can reduce risk. Early detection and management of health conditions, 
can help with making lifestyle changes or having medical treatment before the disease becomes too severe. Education campaigns to promote healthy living and early intervention can help reduce the number of cases of disease in a population. Let's work through some questions to solidify our understanding of communicable and non-communicable diseases. Tuberculosis is a bacterial infection that can spread through the air when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Is tuberculosis a communicable or non-communicable disease? First, identify the nature of the disease. Tuberculosis is caused by bacteria and can spread from person to person via air. Now, determine the type. Diseases spread from one person or organism to another are communicable. Therefore, tuberculosis is a communicable disease. Let's look at another question. Type 2 diabetes is a condition where the body cannot effectively use the insulin it produces. Is diabetes a communicable or non-communicable disease? Type 2 diabetes is a chronic condition involving issues with insulin production and use in the body. Diseases that cannot be spread from person to person are non-communicable. Therefore, type 2 diabetes is a non-communicable disease. In summary, communicable diseases are infectious and can spread from person to person or animal to person, caused by pathogens like bacteria, viruses, parasites and fungi. Non-communicable diseases are not infectious and arise from genetic, lifestyle or environmental factors, with examples including asthma, coronary heart disease and cancers. Understanding these distinctions helps us better grasp the varied approaches to preventing, managing and treating these diseases to maintain overall health and well-being. Watch the rest of the GCSE Biology course at Sophos Education.